So you're curious about ACT. Maybe you heard it on a podcast or someone recommended it to you as a type of therapy and you're wondering like, what actually is this? Is this just CBT plus mindfulness or mindfulness plus compassion? Is this really anything new and how could it help me? The good news is that ACT is awesome. <laughs> the bad news is that it's none of those things that I listed, but it is really powerful and unique and backed by decades of research at this point. Today we'll go over a brief history of ACT, what ACT aims to do and how it works. So by the end of it, you'll have a better understanding of acceptance and commitment therapy in general, but also a better idea of whether it might be a good fit for you and how it can improve your life. And just so there's no confusion, because this is very commonly mixed up, but the shorthand version of acceptance and commitment therapy is ACT, said as one word, and not ACT. Now, who am I to talk about ACT? My name is Dr. Jessica Borshock. I'm a clinical psychologist in private practice here in California. I am what's called a peer-reviewed ACT trainer, meaning that I train other mental health professionals how to use ACT with their clients and how to use it into their own lives. And I've co-authored a number of books on ACT, including a award-winning book, The ACT Approach, that teaches other therapists and other mental health providers how to do ACT. Now, a lot of people think that ACT is this really new therapy, but the truth is its conceptualization happened back in the late 1970s with its first version called Comprehensive Distancing coming out in the early 1980s. The reason that you haven't heard about ACT until recently is that it started as a bottom-up approach. See, most therapies develop because some therapist has been doing things in therapy, noticed a pattern and went, hey, I wonder why this is helping people or if it's helping people. And a therapy is designed around that idea. So they find out what works in practice and then they go back and research it. But sometimes it can be hard to figure out kind of, does this thing actually work? What's actually happening here? ACT started a little differently. It started from a basic science model, an understanding of how behavior and language works, even kind of cognitive behavior, so the way that we interact with our mind. And that was studied over the last few decades and developed into a therapy that has been proven to work based on every component of it. I think of ACT much more as a framework or an approach to life and to our experiences rather than just kind of a collection of skills or exercises. There are definitely those and we'll get into them, but it's important to think about ACT as a lens through which we can understand our own experience and that it can be applied to any situation we come in contact with. That's why it's often referred to as kind of a transdiagnostic approach, meaning that it's not it wasn't developed just for one specific therapy, it's developed for the human condition uh, and help to alleviate suffering. The philosophy of science underpinning ACT is something called functional contextualism. And all it really means is ACT focuses on what works in a given situation, right? How something functions in a given context. And I love this. One, it makes it very unique to the individual but it's what helps us have that kind of transdiagnostic approach or framework. Because at any point I can ask myself, how is this working in this moment? How is this serving me in the long term, in the short term? In the long term, is this moving me towards the life I want to live? In the short term, is this simply a way for me to escape or avoid or hide from something that's uncomfortable or difficult? Experiential avoidance, which we'll talk about in a different video. I love this because it's not prescriptive or rule governed or like everything must go this way because that's not how life works. And it also means that we can bring in a lot of different practices and exercises and skills that work across different disciplines. As long as we ask ourselves like, does this work in this moment? And by work, in act, we mean, is this moving us towards the type of life that we want to have? Is this helping us to reduce suffering and engage in our values? For example, I work with individuals with OCD and I will often combine ERP, exposure plus response prevention, which is the gold standard of treatment for OCD, with ACT, incorporating that as this overarching framework for understanding why we're doing these exposures, how we respond to thoughts and feelings in, in our head, in our body, and what is really important to us in the long term so that we can be even more successful. Similarly, I work with folks who have insomnia and I do CBTI because that is the gold standard, but there are some gaps in that therapy model. And so I think ACT actually kind of fills that in and rounds out that experience so you get even more out of it. 
Same could be said for interoceptive exposure for panic disorder and incorporating ACT principles into it. All right, so I got some of the nerdy background stuff out of the way, but what does ACT actually do? What is it? ACT teaches us to come in contact with our full experience even the things that can be painful or scary or uncomfortable. It teaches us how to understand our patterns and how to look at those patterns and see if they're really working in service of us in the long term. And if they aren't, learning how to break those patterns and taking steps in a direction that's more meaningful to us in the long term, in the direction of our values. Oftentimes we try to avoid the pain that we're experiencing in our life. We, we try to eliminate any pain in our life whatsoever, but that's impossible. Life involves pain. If we care about things, it means that we have the ability to lose them, to be hurt by them, to be disappointed or let down by them. And so while trying to escape pain or to avoid discomfort, we end up bringing more suffering into our life. And everyone has experienced this. Maybe it's as simple as not cleaning up your dishes immediately after cooking dinner and now the food has like hardened and congealed on the pan and it takes so much longer and so much more effort to clean. Or you've been procrastinating on a task and you put it off, you put it off, you put it off, it seems overwhelming, too much. And now you get to the point where you're super close to the deadline and you don't have any wiggle room. You're feeling stressed and anxious and overwhelmed and you still have to do the project. It didn't eliminate your pain or your discomfort. It just delayed it and then reached into the future, brought all of this discomfort and struggling and suffering and just piled it on top. ACT helps us take a clear look at our life and our patterns and say, hey, is this working? What am I reacting to? What am I avoiding or trying not to come in com contact with? And develop strategies and skills and an approach to sit with some of the things that are uncomfortable to learn to not maybe be as reactive or afraid of them so that we can turn towards the life that we want to have. So we can take the small steps that in the long run, while our life might not be pain-free, it'll certainly be meaningful. And so at its core, ACT works through increasing something called psychological flexibility. And psychological flexibility is exactly what I've been talking about. It's learning how to come in full contact with our experiences, learning to be present and to be a, the observer of our patterns and what we want to do in our life so that we can live a meaningful life and take steps towards the things that really matter to us. And psychological flexibility is based on these six core processes. Acceptance, diffusion, present moment awareness, self as context, values, and committed action. In the following videos, I'm going to go into each one of them and give you an idea of what they are and some quick skills that you can use to start implementing these principles in your life. The cool thing is that movement along any of these can increase our psychological flexibility. So there may be some processes that you feel really strong in and others that you might feel very lost or disconnected from or unsure how to move forward. And so I'll be walking you through how to do exactly that. And if you are living in California, if you're an adult and you're interested in starting therapy, go to the description, check out my website, see if we might be a good fit. And so let's dive into that first part of acceptance and commitment therapy. Acceptance. 